Some traditions seem very strange and superstitious to me. For example, one hadith refers to black dogs as devils, and in another we are asked to cover our plates of food because devils don't uncover them. It really doesn't make any sense to me. In the book of Sahih Muslim, which is a compilation of the recorded sayings and actions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, there is a saying that goes as follows. Cover food vessels, invert water vessels, close doors and extinguish lamps, for the devil does not upturn drinking vessels and does not open doors and does not uncover food vessels. The first half of this saying is agreeable to us because it makes us feel that the Prophet, peace be upon him, is concerned about our well-being. Explained in modern day terms, it means that we should cover food containers and that drinking cups should be stored upside down, that doors should be closed, especially before going to bed, and that no fires should be left burning before going to bed. All of these practices constitute sensible hygiene and safety measures. It is the second part of the saying that poses a problem to some people when he mentions the reason for all of these commands. He says that the devil does not open closed doors, nor overturn cups, nor does he uncover food vessels. There is also another saying by the Prophet, peace be upon him, that any jet black dog is Satan, or in other words, is a devil. So some people find this weird and start questioning why Islam would encourage such seemingly illogical things. They ask in disbelief, is a jet black dog really a devil? It is merely a helpless animal. Some people of course find it a great opportunity to discredit Islam by pointing out that it is apparently full of superstitions. First of all, we must understand that Islam came in order to free our minds from myths and superstitions. For example, the Prophet forbade Muslims from wearing or hanging amulets and even described the one who does that as practicing polytheism because he or she believed that such superstitions can benefit them or protect them besides Allah. The problem is that sometimes because of our lack of proper understanding of Arabic linguistics, we do not understand the true meaning of certain things. If we really understood the Arabic language, it would clarify many misconceptions. The word Satan or devil in Arabic is shaitan, which comes from the root word shatana. If we open a reputable Arabic dictionary, we will find that shatana is a long rope used to tether animals. Horse trainers use it to hold wild horses whilst taming them or breaking them. These long ropes serve to keep a distance between the trainer and the wild horse. The word is also used to denote a rope that holds a bucket which is lowered into a well. Here again, it is used to describe a long rope that separates a person from something else. Arabic also uses the word shaitan to mean a snake. And the same word shaitan to denote something which is far away. So basically, the word shaitan is used to denote anything that separates you from a state of well being, anything that causes you harm or injury. Arabs also call thirst the shaitan of the desert. Thirst is a killer. Thirst separates you from good health. If it reaches a certain stage, it can even separate you from life itself. And that is why they called it the shaitan of the desert. The same thing goes for ferocious animals. They separate human beings from a state of safety. A ferocious jet black dog is called shaitan because it is scary. It can also harm a human being and cause anxiety or injury that can lead to death. We all know that a dog cannot open a door and that is why the Prophet peace be upon him said that we should close our doors before retiring to bed because the shaitan or a devil cannot open doors meaning that a ferocious dog therefore would not be able to open it. In other words, the Prophet was commanding people to close their doors because this practice keeps dangerous beasts dogs and otherwise at bay. The same thing goes for harmful microbes, including bacteria and viruses. They can be considered as shayateen, which is the plural of shaitan. They can be considered as devils or satans because they keep us away from good health. So when the Prophet told the people to cover food containers and to keep cups turned upside down at a time when nobody knew anything about microbes, 
he definitely wouldn't have said do so because it keeps microbes away. It would only make sense for him to use a word that they understood at that time and in that place, such as the word shaitan. And as I said, the word shaitan or Satan linguistically is used to denote anything that keeps people away from health, from security, and from any form of safe well-being or even from religion. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, used language that was suitable and comprehensible to the listener. Now let us discuss the issue of the devil. Satan was originally called Iblis. He was not called Satan or devil until he disobeyed God and vowed that he would tempt all humans into evil. That is when he became labeled as devil. Only when he vowed that he would keep us away from religion, away from God. The same goes for human beings who strive to keep us away from God. Those who tell you not to pray. Those who raise doubts in your head about religion. All of these people keep you away from God. So all of these people may be considered as Satans. And God says in the Quran, in the same way we assign to each prophet an enemy. Satans among humans and jinn. They suggest alluring words to one another in order to deceive. So being a shaitan or a devil is a role that can be played by a human being, a jinn, an animal, or anything that is harmful. But our religion does not propagate myths and superstitions. In fact, God sent religion in order to keep us away from such things in our doctrine as well as all other aspects of our lives. We do not worship human beings, nor animals, nor idols. We believe that nothing can bring us any good fortune nor cause us any harm except through the will of God. We must always keep in mind that our religion came with the purpose of freeing our minds from myths and superstitions, not in order to make us pray to such ill-founded beliefs. God Almighty says, He has the keys to the unseen. No one knows them but him. So no one can claim to know of the realms of the supernatural or to foresee the future. I tell that to people who go to so-called fortune tellers or those who look at the stars in order to supposedly foresee the future. Do you think God created the stars and planets in order that we may see the future? Of course not. The Quran says, It is he who made the sun a shining radiance and the moon a light determining phases for it so that you might know the number of years and how to calculate time. It also says, it is he who made the stars so that they can guide you when land and sea are dark. So the stars and planets serve to guide us and to assist us in navigation and in creating these terrestrial bodies which each move in an orbit, he not only has given us means of calculating time, but rather by their creation, time was created. Without the stars and planets, there would not exist days, hours, minutes. God created time and space together. He did not create these celestial bodies so that people should claim that by them, they can foresee the future or describe a person's character. All of these things are prohibited. Why? Because religion came in order to free our minds of myths and superstitions. The mind is the greatest miracle bestowed upon mankind. All animals have a brain, but only man has a mind. The brain of an animal is never referred to as a mind. Only the brain of man is called a mind because we use it to think logically, to reflect, and to comprehend. The more we use our minds, the more we will free our minds from superstitions. And the closer we will get to the truth, the closer we get to God Almighty.